And I just want to say thank you to those that spent the time to um, type in the chat last time. You thought I wouldn't forget, but I'm here to check on you. Loretta said that she wanted to study form, shadow composition in nature. So Loretta, I hope you were able to do a little bit of that this past month. And Loretta, if you're here, let me know if you did. Um, Sandra says she'd like to create greeting cards instead of purchasing them, which is a great goal. Um, maybe this, you know what? It's October. You have November, December. You have time. You actually have time to make some. They have like watercolor postcards that you can do. So that would be great. Um, Peg said, or Muriel said, draw animals. Leslie said, abstract portraits. Um, so I hope you're able to do that. Animals. A lot of people said that they wish they can draw animals. Um, painting flowers, Glenda, but always very small. I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to branch out. As you can see on my wall, we have like little, little squares, but I'm, I'm slowly getting bigger. So that was my goal by the end of the year. I'm hoping. All right. So if you haven't yet, I'd love to just check in with you and let me know what exactly are you trying to um, work on this upcoming month. So we have October 19th through November, whenever the third month is, for you to think about, you know, what would you like to work on, whether it be um, somebody put down loose lines. Um, Sally says she's trying to recover from surgery. So I hope she's doing okay. Um, and Samantha said practicing art more consistently. So anything really that you want to work on, put it on the screen so that next time, you know, the teacher and me, I'm going to check on your homework and see, <laughs> and see how you're doing. All right. Let's see. Lighten up on myself. Francie, I understand. I, I hear you. Um, I, it's so easy to just be so, you know, like, oh my gosh, everything that I'm working on is really, really, you know, hard, but it's okay. It's just practice. Um, Claire said, make time for art. Nanda said, find my artistic voice. And that, I feel like that comes with practice. Sometimes I look at my stuff and I feel like I have um, a split personality going on because I have, the, <laughs> I don't know if you feel the same. I have things that are like super watery watercolors. And then I love doing weird little worlds. Um, so I'm just, I just go with it. And I say, if you just keep practicing every day, your hand finds you, you know, like it just, it, it comes and you don't even have to try really hard. Just Let's see, have art consistently, have fun. Yes, have fun. All right. Um, Sally said, I want to find my medium. I think it might be color pencil. Sally, I just mentioned you earlier. I can't remember why. Oh, okay, keep working every day. Yeah, and I hope your foot's okay. Um, I'm all over the board too. Yeah, Susan, it's so easy, right? Because there's so much, I have like, is it a magpie that likes the shiny things? Like, I feel like I have that, you know, somebody talks about a new art supply. I'm like, oh gosh, I got to go buy it, you know, or, um, or they say, oh, you, you know, um, I might be going to, I went to a, we took the kids to Kentucky. I saw this mural on the wall and it's not even really a mural. It was just a, um, a painting that was like blobby. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And instead of taking a picture of my children, I took a picture of the mural like the whole time. And they're like, what are you doing, mom? <laughs> and so anyway, I was trying a little bit of that in my sketchbooks. All right, keep um, learning new techniques. Yeah, so type it up there. And then next week, I'm gonna check on you because that's what I do um, and see how, or next month, how you're doing. All right, so today we are working on abstracts. Um, my computer is being weird, so you won't see me in the corner like you normally would, but you will see my desk. Here we go. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. 
So this is like, I painted this earlier and I saw that weird blobby art that I really, really liked. So then I'm like, I'm gonna try the same compositions only in blob form. <laughs> like I tried it up here, all the weird blobs. And then, so these are like experiments. So whatever you have going on in your sketchbook, don't worry about it. It's just, it's just for fun. All right, so I want us to get into, it's a little fuzzy, they say. All right, let me see if I can fix it. Sometimes, let's see, let's see. Is that better? It could just be my, uh, it says HD. Okay, let me see. Is that better a little bit? Okay, good. Um, I don't know, I think it was just too far away. So now that we're closer, there we go. Awesome, okay. So to get in the right mindset of how I work in abstract, I like to keep this quote in mind. So if you wanna um, jot this down for later, just Claude Monet abstract. Um, let's see, and then let's just, I'm just gonna read it. It says, when you go out to paint, try to forget objects you have before you, or what objects you have before you, a tree, a house, a field, or whatever. Merely think, here is a little square of blue, here an oblong of pink, here a streak of yellow. I just, I just absolutely love that because for me, I am like, so um, concerned with how to interpret things just so like you have to remember your mind or your hand is not a camera so if you're working just have fun with it just have a little bit of a square of blue an oblong of pink I love that he says oblong of pink right because like when you see Monet's um, water lilies it's just like that just like a pink um pink spot or whatever. So when you're working on abstract, do not be concerned about um, how it's going to necessarily look. Just think about the objects, focus on the colors, maybe even squint. It's a lot of times a lot of people that helps them out when they're squinting. Okay, are we good? All right, so now let's get started. So what I'd like to do, I'll let you know what I'm working on. I always like to throw in a weird tool. I don't know if I'll get to this, but I think this is a calligraphy pen that I picked up at the art store. So this is great because um, it makes weird marks. And also if you have a stick, I have a lucky stick that I, I have a whole bunch of sticks. Hang on one second, I'll grab them. Okay, so when my family and I travel, I always grab sticks wherever we go, like even on a walk. Um, yeah, I do have a lucky stick. Um, and I use it when, I use it all the time. Here it is. It's well loved. Look at that. It's the lucky stick. It has so much ink in it. I take it with me um, everywhere. So maybe if you go on a walk, pick, pick some. Some of these are from... Um, Yellowstone, um, the national park. We'd like to go to a lot of different places. So I tried painting with, let me see. One of the, this one I tried painting with and it was great. Um, they just give you some weird marks. So just keep a, a stick brush, all right? Yes, so Nanda says I pick up stones and rocks. That's awesome. Francie says I always pick up bits of nature, pine cones. Yes, pine cones. Those are great. All right, so have some tools around you. I'm using watercolors, some oil pastel, some colored pencil. Um, if you want to, I may use, I have these inks. I may use them, I don't know. So I always just like to have everything close by so that when I'm working, things are easy to grab instead of me having to get up and, you know, grab things. All right, 
So let's get started. I am going to find an empty spot in the workbook. Oh, I was, um, I visited my niece and we love to do art together. And I asked her, I'm like, what do you want to paint? And she wanted to paint characters. So that's why there's a random, there's a random character in the sketchbook. Um, yeah, Sailor Moon. That's what I thought it was too. She's the one that picked it. All right, here we go. So I picked this um, kind of like in honor of Monet, right? The water lilies. But also, I just absolutely love how it looks and how we can interpret it in our own way. I know abstract artists have a lot of um, different ways that they approach things, but I will show you how I approach um, something like this. All right, so first of all, I will, I like to do abstracts in two, but first I'm gonna sketch because I my my hands feel like, not cold, but like, I can't just go into things without first warming up. So let's warm up a little bit. Oopsie. Where do I go? So I'm gonna make two little boxes. Please type in questions if you have any questions, would love to hear from you. I'm gonna to try to monitor the chat, but sometimes I get talking and going and then I forget. All right, Legos, yes. Um, if you've been with me for a while, you've heard the story, but my boys love Legos, especially my youngest. So I step on them all the time. So if I step on it, it becomes mine. So it's a great rule. <laughs> like if I step on your Lego, so he doesn't leave them on the ground now um, because of that. But yes, I love, love Legos. Okay, so what I would do is I'm gonna look at this and I'm going to just take a second. So you take a second and kind of figure out what you wanna do. I always, I also like using Legos for viewfinders. So you can make your own little viewfinder. Um, this whole big thing is overwhelming to me sometimes. So I like to take a viewfinder and just, you know, Ooh, that's kind of dramatic, right? So pick a, Candy said Lego Christmas Village arrived yesterday. Hopefully you have spare parts that you can use, Candy. Um, look at that. Oh, see? Some pink, right? So you can move a viewfinder around if you have one. I have a makeshift one here. Or you can just fold a piece of paper. So take a second and look at your... Um, Look at your reference photo and just kind of figure out what you want to do. Keeping in mind, you know, you don't want things to be totally centered, unless you do, you can. This is kind of cool for me, the, the look right here. So maybe I'll do that. Now, when I start, I'm going to give myself one minute. Let's see. So I'll give you one minute too. We'll do one for one minute. And then one box for one minute, if I can get my timer going. All right, here we go. And just pick anything. I'm gonna use this because you can see it, but you could use whatever you want. All right, here we go. One minute and start. Okay, so this is how I have my box. I have this crazy pink, awesomeness right here going down also you don't have to make it look like this photo you can just make it be lines if you want this part i feel is important because i want to put our um our reference photo away in a minute so let's really think about how you want to do your composition See, even if I'm trying not to make it look like the photo, it always ends up kind of having that, that um, energy or the look of it. I feel like a minute is too long. Do you feel like a minute's too long? You have 11 seconds. I'm done for now because we're just going abstract, keeping it super loose. Okay. So that one minute is done. So take your viewfinder or 
you don't have a viewfinder, just fold it to whatever you want. Or if you just have a device, what you could do is you could like zoom in all the way. You know what I mean? Like on your iPad or whatever, zoom in and see what you like. For some reason, my flowers are all ending up on one side. So maybe I kind of like that, like a pop of pink with some green and then another pop of pink. All right, I'll give ourselves one minute again. Everybody doing okay? All right, and start. Oh no, I lost my pencil. <laughs> okay, you keep going. Lost my pencil, there it is. So remember, we're keeping this loose because it's gonna be abstract to where when somebody looking at this would be like, what, what is that? What is the inspiration for that? Look at these little lines. You know how some abstract pieces have lines? You're just keeping it really, really loose. These weird marks that I'm doing, it's just to remind myself where to keep it nice and dark. Don't overthink it. If you're done beforehand, I'm finishing early for some reason. So you got 10 seconds, six seconds left. It seems fast, right? You'd think like one minute, that doesn't seem like a lot of time. And then you're like, oh wait, I'm done. So just think about that. I, I'd say let's do two more. Let's do two more because this is a lot of fun. All right. One and two, because what? We just spent, you know, four minutes and you have compositions already. I love that. So don't overthink it, just make it really, really fast. Okay, so this time around, you know what might be fun is if you turn your picture upside down, just to totally switch it up, you know? I'm gonna do that and turn my picture upside down, just finding a composition I like. Okay. Do I like that? I don't know if I like that. Also, don't be afraid to add white. Maybe I'll do this. Like just this corner. All right, so here we go. One more minute. Turn on the timer and go. A splash of pink right here. Another splash of pink, some green. There's something to be said about um, not keeping things tight and giving your areas room to breathe. That is something that I'm personally striving to do. For some reason, depending on what I'm feeling like in my, oh, let me see, 13 seconds. What I'm feeling like in my head, things get really, really tight or they get really, my goal is to get really, really expansive. I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example. Okay, that's one minute. So I'm, I'm like purposely stopping with a lot of white because I really want to fill it in. I don't know why. I see a blank page and I'm like, fill it in. Let me show you what I mean. Um, so my goal is to have like white spaces. Do you see what I mean? Like some breathing room. But for some reason, whatever headspace I'm in, things get really, really tight. See that? I don't know what that is. Like it gets tight. Like if I'm, if I'm like having a rough week or something, whatever I'm making, maybe not a rough week, but just like everything gets tight. But then I'm like, I really want space. So think about that when you're working. Um, 
See, really, really tight. Um, so I'm, I'm helping, I'm trying to learn how to add more white space just to give the viewers eyes to relax and rest because that's just as important. All right, one more. One more minute. Okay, ready? Pick, pick a spot. Hmm, this gets tricky. Challenge yourself, challenge yourself and, and see, I was just going upside down, wasn't I? Maybe I'll go sideways. Oh, this is gonna be a complicated one right here in the corner. All right, one minute and go. Also, it's helpful if your viewfinder is the same size as your box that you draw. And that is the thing that I forget to do all the time. So my proportions are never exact, but you know what? Just having fun. Everybody's so quiet. I'm hoping that means that you're really focusing and you're having a good time, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Everybody's just so focused. I love it. Okay, so we have nine seconds. Okay, so that's my four. And timer's done. All right. Look at your page and see which one you want to try. All right, when I am doing an abstract, I tend to do multiple at a time. So usually I'll have two pages right next to each other. I'll show you what I mean. Sometimes I have three. So these were all done in one sitting and I just, on my table, I taped three pieces of paper. So you could totally do that maybe for homework. Just take some pieces of paper, tape them on your desk, turn some really loud, awesome music on that just gets you going and then just start painting. Um, that's what I like to do. Um, and it doesn't matter if, I, and, you know, people think you're crazy because you're dancing. I feel like that's the best, like to get to stand up and move. So we're sitting down a lot. Michelle says, I oh, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. But yeah, so it doesn't look like, these two kind of look like they were done together. This one, they just kind of threw in some crazy colors. So think about that when you are doing your work, you can work on two at a time, all right? So I'm going to take my page, and I'm actually gonna put this away. So maybe maybe we'll keep it out just to look at the colors, but we're not really gonna be focusing on them, but just maybe as a color reference. Because really what's good would be to look at what you made and then make something out of your little squares, all right? So if you wanna get another blank piece out, let me see, I'm trying to think how I wanna do this. I'm going to turn my page. And I'm gonna do my pieces on this side. So also in your sketchbook, don't feel like you have to have everything facing the right way each time. Like some things I just face the opposite way. Cause it's your sketchbook, doesn't matter. All right, here we go. Anybody have any questions, please type it up. If not, we're gonna get going. So take a second, look at the four little photos or little things you made, little compositions, and pick which one you like the best. I am liking, of course, mine's upside down, but that's okay. I like this one. And... I'm kind of drawn to this one, but it looks complicated. 
also you can go back and and do this on your own you know like if you really like one you can also do another piece um my only concern about doing it on this page is some of my markers kind of led through so you might not see it as well so i'm going to get another piece of paper I'm just grabbing a Canson watercolor paper. Um, their watercolor paper really stands up to not just watercolor. I use I use everything on it. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to start my composition. You can do mine. You can use what I'm working, or you could do it on your own. Um, all right. See, now I'm looking at this page and I'm like pausing, like, ugh, it's too big. I can't handle, but we can handle it. We can do it. Okay. So I think I'm going to split it into two, though, for myself. You can do whatever you would like. I'm splitting it into two just so I know for sure. Let's see that everything is, that I can make two compositions out of this one. And maybe I'll go like that. All right. So a good thing about this is you could start with, there's a lot of cool pinks. So I would urge you to grab a pencil that you can't erase. I'm gonna grab a light pink pencil here. Can you see that? You can't really see that. So I'm going to use a bright red. And I'm just going to do my map, kind of like here. Just going to kind of go like this. It's almost like you're working from memory because even though you have your color reference, you're still kind of trying to come up with your own way. So I'm noticing that I'm putting everything in the middle here. So I need to stop that. I need to add another something here. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a round brush. This is a number eight. Pink. Some water. And I always love to start with watercolor first. I don't know why. I think it's because I love to layer with it. So move this up a little bit. Okay. And I'm just kind of getting the tones. This is where if you have inks, it might be fun to just kind of see what they will do since it's an abstract. So I have this super, super wet. I'm gonna take this um, purple, this purple. I don't know how it's gonna look, but I'm just gonna drop it in there. Ooh, ooh, I like how it's dancing. Now there's no purple on my original photo, but that's okay. So that's the thing about having supplies close by is they're great for like trying things that you might not normally try. So while I have this going on, I'll go down here and do a second one. And there's no guarantee that this will always look exactly how you want it or whatever. That's what playing is about. So we are just playing. This pink is so bright. So I'm going to So it's just like a, a hint of the flower, but it's not necessarily exactly the flower. Just 
Just dropping some more ink in here just because I did it earlier. And I usually have two things of water with me because I get one dirty super fast. So there's usually two jars of water close by. Okay, so this is looking okay. Let's see, what else kind of colors are there? Like a blue or a blue green? No, it's like a... It's like a green, that, yeah, it's a little bit of blue maybe. So I'm not really, I'm not really concerned that it's not looking maybe exactly the way I want because I'm just kind of interpreting it in my own way. So I'll, I'll talk you through my process right here. I'm just, I think I took, see, I already forgot what I was trying to copy here. So right here, these uh, pink petals, and then there's this green up here, which I think I will add, but it's not even exactly green. It's like uh, a dusty, dirty, green and I don't mind if things dance with each other and these are just my first layers so I'm just dropping paint down it's kind of my way of um it's my way of conquering the blank page watercolors just really help me get that you know first few marks down and to not be too precious. So now I'm gonna go real dark right here. I don't really use a black. I kind of mix my paints gray with a brown and make my own. So that's kind of fun to do. So see if you can, you know. Right. So whatever I added here, I'm going to add at the top. And I'm just kind of making this up. Just referencing this really for the colors not really thinking too much about how it looks oh i like that so later on i'm going to come back with marker maybe on that um, a weird light green. There's a lot of green in this photo. Also adding that. Some loose brown lines, kind of like the stems. But you know what? I'm seeing some red in there, so I'm going to add red too. So as you can see, I'm not super precious about my palette. I kind of mix everything in there. And that stems from needing to create fast. I try, I've been trying to create before my kids wake up before school. And so um, I don't have time to mix. So I just, you know, use what is on my page. Okay, so that's my first few attempts. And as the reason why I'm working two at a time is you're waiting for one to dry. And then as you're waiting for one to dry, you could go up and work on something else. You know what I mean? So you're like doing double duty. Um, all right, now I'm gonna add some, let's see here, oil pastel. So if you have oil pastel, get that out. 
I love this like pale green. This is, it's almost like a mint. It's one of my favorites. And I'm just really making some crazy lines. Not really even thinking about exactly what it looks like. Oh, I challenge you to do like, you know, use your non-dominant hand. That's a fun one to do. That's really great for abstracts too. Sometimes I forget the kind of lines I wanna make. So I typically have these out on my desk. Sometimes, that sounds weird. I typically have these on my desk sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> do you have it on your desk or you don't I have these on my desk so that I can you know just here's a green and I love the way these are just scribbly so I'm going to take my page and I'm just gonna do some scribblies And then whatever I make over there, I'm gonna do the same down here. So just kind of, this is where music comes in. To me, abstract and music kind of go together because you just um, get moving. All right, Loretta says, I love Earth Green from Favor Castle 172. Oh, I have to check that out. Also, I hope I'm saying a lot of these like companies that make um, beautiful supplies, hard to say. It's so hard for me to say their names. Um, and it could just be a me problem. It's not them. <laughs> I just have a hard time pronouncing things sometimes. All right, Loretta says it's like a gray green. I'm gonna have to check that out, Loretta. Thank you for that info. All right, so now I'm just taking oil pastels and I'm just smushing them because I smushed it on one side, I'm smushing it on the other side also. Now, if you have a studio and you have room to make giant paintings, these are great like little studies. We're, we're essentially making little studies that you could turn into something pretty spectacular blown up into a bigger canvas. So think about that too. Here, I'm just kind of following the pattern of the outline. I don't really even know what that is, but I'm just making marks there. I love how oil pastels just write on top of these things too. So keep that in mind. There is this one pen pencil. It's a Stabilo and it writes on glass. Um, it writes on glass. It writes on so many things and it's like magic. I'm going to take it and I'm going to dip it into my water and then it like activates and it, it gives a different texture. See? So that's something new look for it's stabilo they have they come up with they have a lot of different colors you could probably do the same with a watercolor pencil but sometimes when i'm like it needs more drama i take this out and i just add oh my goodness and then try to hold it far away so then you kind of lose control you know then it's just like whoa it makes its own lines. Carol says, this is a wonderful, oh, thank you, Carol. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm having a blast. I love creating with you all. So now take a second, look at your work and see, is this, do you like it? Do you wanna turn it like this? I'm, I'm loving the composition of this. This one needs a little bit of work. <laughs> so I'm gonna take it and, uh, add add to it and sometimes compositions don't work so there's that okay see i'm like thinking which material do i want to pick up 
So there's a lot of mind changing. And then if you kind of get lost, you can always look at your photo and be like, oh, there's some lines here. So I'll add some of those kinds of lines. And then I'll do it right here. Down here, maybe some gray. Oh, that's not gray. It's like purpley. What is this called? Old bros. What would be fun is like if you take your pastels and you close your eyes and then pick pick a color just without looking and then you know try to use that color. That's a fun little experiment you could try. I'm trying to see if I could salvage this one. Sometimes things just don't work out and then you have to try it again. All right, maybe it needs to add some pink on this side. I am really like a pro at overcomplicating things. So <laughs> sometimes I do something and I'm just like, oh, that's great. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I need to add more of this. And then after a while, it's like, why did I add that? That's why I cheat and use the oil pastels because right underneath it, like it just writes, it's it's almost like an eraser. It glides over. Ooh, now I like that orange on top of that pink. There's no orange really. Well, I guess at the tips of this, it could be classified as orange, but having having that pop of orange, I really like. Trying to channel what Monet says, a little oblong of pink. But for some reason, my pinks are not oblongs. They're looking very jagged. I think the leaves have orange. Oh, thank you, Louise. You're right. The leaves have orange. Okay, well, awesome. That worked out. Just adding some more orange because I just fell in love with that. Another color I love, or what you could do is if you have acrylics around. Um, oh, we says I think it's my printer. That's okay. That actually is like an accidental. Um, that could just be a fun little thing you add. Um, you could also use acrylics if you have those lying around. I have some gouache here. What color is this? I don't know what color this is. Oh, this is a pale blue. So sometimes I don't always, um, I love using my finger to paint, but there's this thing called a workman's friend. Um, as I have gotten older, I feel like I need to protect my fingers more just for paints getting into and seeping into your skin. So this is a this is a good thing to use. It's just clear barrier. That's what it is. Workman's friend, superior barrier cream. Guards against skin irritants, grease, paint, stain, glue, whatever. All right. So I usually put a little bit of that and then I take the paint. And I just kind of smush it around right into, and I use my finger because you can't really control it that well. And that works great for a abstract. And this is a acrylic wash. Turning my page around again. And I'm adding a spot of this color in certain places, just to see how they play together. Oh. 
This is a good time if you have a lot of paint to take a stick and just kind of mark through things. I just love that sound too. I don't know if you can hear that. It's the scratching, feels good in the brain for me. So whatever I'm doing on one side, I'm gonna kind of try to do on the other. Getting paint all over the hands, but that's okay. Going through and just scratching along. I feel like it needs more definition. So really what we're doing is we're making abstract that's rooted in like a life picture, like a, an actual photo, but then what comes out may not exactly be you know, what you're seeing. And this might be a good thing to work on for those of you that said you want to be loose and you want to um, work on being more free. Just take and do what we just did and do like four different, um, four different compositions. And then don't even look or like figure out your colors ahead of time. Pick those colors out and don't look at your photo and then just kind of go from there. So Sylvia says, mine isn't very abstract, but I like it. Good, I'm glad you like it. I don't feel like mine's super abstract either. Um, I think the reason why is because of these florals, um, or not florals, the petals that I added, but that's okay. I'm glad you like it. Um, let's see here. My watch is telling me to stand up. <laughs> I have such a bossy watch, jeez. Stand up when I want to. All right, let's see. I guess it's a good reminder to stand up if you haven't stood up. That's another thing. Stand up if you are creating this way. It's fun to stand up. And as you can see, I'm just turning as I'm going along. There's parts of this that I really like and then that I want to incorporate on the other side. So I'm going to do that with this green. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about the homework while we're going here. Just going to add some of these really weird lines real quick. Paint on the hand. I hope you have paint on your hand like me. OK, so. The next page, if you keep working, I'm just gonna talk you through the homework. The next page is this. And I just wanna challenge you to take this and turn this into an abstract piece. Now, don't take the whole thing, that's overwhelming. Take a little viewfinder or fold it up. Um, where did my viewfinder go? I lost it. Okay, anyway, what do I do with it? I'm not sure. So what I want you to do is, I'm just gonna fold this so you can see it. Just take parts of it that you like. Like you might wanna just do those balloons. They're almost like already abstract for you and then throw in some pinks. Do you know what I mean? So I gave this to you just so you can kind of play around with it. Even the tableware, you don't have to do the tableware. Like here, it could just be like gray lines and some white jagged things coming through. So just kind of channel Monet when he says, don't try to paint the object, forget what you're seeing before you. Think of it as a color, like a little square of this, a little streak of that, all right? That's just for fun if you want to do it. Or let's go back and try this one again. 
right? So either either one, it's up to you. Um, now, I'm gonna take my crazy compositions here and when I cut them in half, not in half, but ooh, but that might be an idea. You could take your painting and then you can just cut out the parts you'd like or don't like. For example, I don't really love this part, but I really like this part. Where can we find it, Dina says? Oh, um, it is linked into the, you're talking about the reference photo. It is linked in the email. It has like a little link in there. And um, the folder has all of the photos and things that we use. All right. And then Dina, if you can't find it, email me and I will send you the link specifically to that. So this, I, I love this part, but I don't love this part. So what I could do is I could just cut this, just cut it. I kind of like that one better. See what I mean? Like, so it's really up to you what you want to do with your work that you're creating. You can even cut this even more if you want. This one is kind of cool the way it is. All right, so um, I hope you had a good time doing that. I'm going to switch back to check on everyone. I am just so glad and thankful that you all joined me today. Hi, everyone. I wanted to hop back on here and tell you a little bit more about Painting with Joy. Painting with Joy is a monthly paint hangout time where we gather together. I'll give you the photo ahead of time or reference topic and ideas. Um, and then we'll gather together right now via Zoom and we will talk. You can ask me questions. We'll show each other your work. And it's just the time to just relax, um, just chill, hang out, and create some art together. So information about Painting with Joy will be in the description below. Um, and yeah, definitely check it out and register if you haven't already. Hope to see you there.